walking like tree kids.
Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay. You can sit wherever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Она еще не закончила ТГК. Ага, все, она будет тут, а тогда будет, мы поменяем ее туда. Страва, как снимает? Скрип по руслей. На интервью? Да. Когда ты сегодня встал из рамку? Ты скажи, спроси, когда я лягала. Когда я лягала в час? Что вы готовите на брекфаст? Бегелс? Бегелс, да. Что еще? Что еще? Каша манна. Жизнь манна. Яичница. Да. Да. Каша рисова. Рисова.
glass, please.
Мы видели, как Бог провел нас через эти трудности. Мы переживали трудности и встречали препятствия. Но потому что мы доверяли Богу. Бог провел нас. И так как Бог провел израильский народ через море, так он провел и нас. И мы сегодня в этом месте. И мы можем опять быть вместе с нами. И я хочу вам сказать эту вещь. Для того, чтобы Бог ответил Израиль. For God to listen to Israel. Для того, чтобы он мог с ним работать. In order for God to be able to work with them. От Израиля требовало нас послушание. From Israel, God needed their obedience. Но это меня очень хочу попросить вас, дедушки. So I want to ask all you to be послушным. To be obedient. Чтобы ваши учителя, ваши помощники. So that your help is in the future. Ваши лидеры. All your leaders. Могли вести вас в правильное направление. Помогать вам, учить вас. Вы должны проявлять послушание. Поэтому я прошу вас, как израильский народ, вы будете учить на гарантиях. Будьте послушны вашему наставнику, учителям. Тогда мы все вместе пройдем. Я также прошу, чтобы э, все помощники между собой рабочие клиенты. Чтобы мы с любовью и с уважением относились к друг другу. So that we can all with love to see the better. И я надеюсь, что в этом нам благословит Господь. И в этом вся слава будет приезжать в этом году. Теперь звук стал лучше, и я хочу пригласить нашего пастыря, чтобы он открыл этот тем и попросил Божьего благословения. Я не 
always with us, okay? We have to trust that he is always going to be with us. All right, let's see the rest of this. Israelites 
they were becoming very strong. It was becoming a lot of men who were very strong. There was um, Israelite men who were so strong, and there was a ton of them. So that Pharaoh, he got scared, and he's like, what if there are slaves? But what if they're going to get the idea to become the boss of us? So we have to stop them. I want to stop them. And what we're going to stop them with is I'm going to talk to the woman who helped to bring the Israelite baby boys into the world. And he talked to them and he said, hey, they're called midwives. They're like, hey, midwives, I want you, whenever baby boys are born, I want you to kill them. Can you believe it? And so the, the Israelite midwives are like, we're not going to do that. How would we kill little baby boys? So they didn't tell Pharaoh. And then Pharaoh found out and was like, what is this? Why are you guys not listening to me? I told you to kill the baby boys. Why are you not killing them? And then they said, we fear God. We're not going to do such things. So then Pharaoh was like, you know what? Then my people are going to do that. So he told his army, he told the Egyptian people, you know what? Egyptian, my army, we are going to kill all the little baby boys. And so that's what they did. They took and they ran into the Israelite homes and they took little baby boys and they threw them in the river to die. Can you believe that? They killed them little baby boys up to two years old. But there was one mom. There was one mom and she saw this baby boy. He didn't have, she didn't name him yet. She's had this baby boy and obviously the Lord was making all of this happen. And she hid him for three months. So she had her belly, then she gave birth to this baby, and then she hid him for three months. Three months she was hiding him so nobody would know about this baby boy that she had. So she had this baby boy, she hid them, but then the, the Egyptian army is still trying to kill baby boys. So then this mom, she takes this baby, she makes a basket for this baby, she takes um, the baby to a river and she prays to God and says, God, this baby is now in your hands. It is now in your control. Please protect this baby and do what you want with this baby. And she lets her baby go down the river. And she's watching the baby go in the basket. Can you guys imagine that? I'm pretty sure I'm praying. Just thinking about it. I have two babies. I have two girls, Amelia and Sophia. And for me to think to make a basket and just let them go in the river? How strong faith this mom had. So she lets them go and, and this baby had an older sister. This baby had an older sister. And so the sister followed the baby like alongside on the, like where she could walk and see where the baby goes. So she's watching the baby, watching the baby. Imagine the baby is crying in the basket. The baby is amongst water, she's just going somewhere. And finally, the baby gets stuck in a certain area next to the river. So the baby gets stuck. Now, Pharaoh's daughter and her servants come to take a bath. They come to take a bath at this area. And she sees a baby, she hears a baby crying. And she's like, why do I hear a baby crying? Where is this baby coming from? And she's like, okay, servant, go get me what is in that basket. So she gets, she brings the basket over, and it says the servant brings the basket over to Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter opens the basket, and she sees that the baby is crying. And she's like, oh no, this is definitely an Israelite baby. They had a specific blanket with the baby. She's like, this is an Israelite baby. This is the baby that my father is trying to kill. And it says that the Pharaoh's daughter had compassion on the child. She cared for the child and she said, I will take this baby and it will be my baby. So now the sister, you know, that was sneaking around and trying to see where that baby was, going in the basket, she comes up and she's like, oh hey, so I know somebody who can like help you nurse the baby, who can feed the baby for you and stuff. And so the, the Pharaoh's daughter is like, okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Go run and get me this mom who can feed this baby. Guess who that lady was? That was the mom of the baby who let, you know, the baby go. And so Pharaoh's daughter says, I am going to call this baby Moses. 
Who knows what the name Moses means? There's a meaning to Moses. Yes, Mr. Pastu. Correct. Pulled out of water. She says, I'm going to name this baby Moses. Moses means pulled out of water. Just so you guys know, fun fact about what Moses means. So, Moses, his mom is, you know, breastfeeding him. He now gets older. He's growing up. He's growing up. Then, he goes to where the slaves are working, the Israelite slaves. And he is seeing there, and he's watching everything, and these slaves are building for Pharaoh, like a huge statue of him. They're working hard. They're working very, very hard. And so, um, they're building all of this, they're building all of this, and Pharaoh, or, and Moses, sees a soldier hitting and whipping very hard one of the slaves. And Moses is furious, so mad, he runs up to that soldier and kills him. He kills the soldier, and he hides him in the sand, so that like they wouldn't find out about him. Then the next day, Moses comes, he's like, oh my goodness, I just killed a person, but hopefully nobody knows. Then two Israelite people from the camp come out to him and think, what, you think you can hide from this? You think God didn't see that you killed someone? So Moses, uh, Moses finds out that people heard, people heard that Moses killed an Israelite soldier, so he runs. He runs out of there and he's running from Pharaoh. Pharaoh finds out. Pharaoh's chasing him. How could you and why would you kill my soldier? How could you do this? But Moses is running, 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 running. He's running through the desert. He's running in the wilderness. He's going. Then he comes to a place where there is water. There's water and he wants to drink. So he stops there to get some water. Now there's some other shepherds who are trying to get some drink too. At this time also, there's girls who are coming to the well also to get water for their household. Now these shepherds are shooing away the girls. Moses steps in, he becomes the hero, and is like, hey, let me help these girls get away from here. What are you doing? Let the girls get a drink. Being a gentleman. Gentlemen, take no help girls. So Moses ends up helping these girls. The girls are like, okay, thank you, and they leave. Then they come back to home, and their father's name is Jethro. And Jethro is like, oh, you guys are back so soon. You guys like usually take such a long time to get water. Why are you guys back here so soon? And they're like, oh, there was this man who helped us, who helped us by the water, and he shoot away some other like people who were trying to get us away from there. And he's like, the Jethro is like, well, where is he? Why didn't you invite him? And they're like, well, I don't know. He just helped us. We just let him go. He's like, no. So they call Moses, Moses comes there, and guess what? Moses gets married to one of those girls. So Jethro is now his father-in-law. Moses becomes um, the shepherd for Jethro, his father-in-law. So he goes through the wilderness and he's watching these sheep and being a shepherd, but shepherds do best kind of thing. And he's walking, um, and he's just watching these beautiful, sheep and he's going with them, going with them through the wilderness and he's walking, walking and he sees a burning bush. He sees a bush that's on fire. It's on fire but it's not dead. So if you guys see a tree that's on fire, it's going to burn, it's going to die. But the leaves are still all alive. They're all green. They're still alive and it's on fire. So Joe, Moses is looking at this bush and he's like, oh my goodness, what is this? And he's trying to go around it and he hears a voice, Moses, stop. Take off your sandals because where you are standing is holy ground. So he now gets scared and like takes off his sandals. He bows down and this is God talking to Moses. And, and God says, Moses, I have chosen you. You are going to free my people. You are going to go back into Egypt. And you are going to take my people out of slavery. And Moses is like, Lord, who am I? I can't do this. What are you talking about? Are you sure you have the right man? I can't do this. I talk slow. I stutter. I'm like not a good person for this. And God says, am I not the one who made you? Am I not the one who give, gives you words what to say? Didn't I give you your mouth? Didn't I give you your eyes? And he says, but God, I'm not qualified. I'm not good. I'm not good enough. 
And God says, he gets angry, and he says, fine, Moses, you will have a helper, and that helper's name will be Aaron. He, God says, Aaron, I will tell Aaron to come and meet you halfway in the wilderness. So after the burning bush, Moses then goes back. God talks to Aaron, and is like, Aaron, Moses is going to meet you in the, in the wilderness. Go meet Moses. So they meet there.